Hi guys. Thank you for joining Ace Your Health podcast at Ace Integrative Health. My name is Dr. Ace, Dr. Toxie, whatever you want to call me. Here in Mason, Ohio, we have Riddhi Toxie with us. She's our yoga teacher. We're going to tackle a topic today that has been part of a way of practicing medicine and a, a it's part of yoga. It's called Ayurveda. So we're going to talk about that a little bit, get you guys familiar with what I think about, what she thinks about, what our philosophy is on Ayurveda and yoga and how it connects to medicine. So that's what we're going to learn today. And we're going to learn a little bit about ourselves as well, who we are, how we are, and how we think about or how we should think or how we may think about our foods, our seasons, and our bodies. And how does all of those things relate to producing harmony in our body compared to producing disease, disharmony in our body. So when we talk about disease, we're looking at an, a type of an, an, an energy that we don't like. So disease is nothing more than an energy change that we don't like. And we're going to look at Ayurveda from a, or a health from a totally different perspective and learn where things come from. What did people used to do 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 years ago? How did they feel the world of health? And what did they understand about the energies? And how did they use the planet? to solve the energy crisis that we're in. So once, once we understand that, then that's a little bit easy to control or change or manipulate our energies mm -hmm. that can help us really understand who we are. So thank you so much for joining us. That was a little brief overview. You know, we love your presence on this show. It's an amazing, you know, a fresh new perspective on different topics, especially if those are holistic and natural. And, you know, last couple of weeks you talked about, we talked about yoga and, mm -hmm. you know, eight limbs of yoga and different things that go along with yoga and why we do yoga. Part of yoga is Ayurveda. Yep. What is Ayurveda? What would you say as a young, you know, American who lives and who has studied the Western world or studied in the Western world, mm -hmm. what does this word mean to you and what do you, how would you say that, how would you explain it? So before I learned a little bit more about it, mm -hmm. I just thought it was herbs and um, just treating people with pill, like sugar pills. That's, mm -hmm. That was my idea of what Ayurveda was. Um, but as I got more into yoga, I understood that yoga and Ayurveda go hand in hand. So I'm coming at this from a yogic perspective, and this is your complete ballpark because Ayurveda is <laughs> your thing. But um, from a yogic perspective, Ayurveda is more about how you heal the body and provide nutrients through natural resources. Um, and Ayurveda, I have learned, incorporates more than just plants too. It also is about catering a specific diet. It's about understanding the human mind and emotions and personalities and and um, it is so much more than just a sugar pill <laughs> essentially. Okay. That's pretty cool. So what is, have you, um, do you know the term Ayurveda? What does that mean? Yeah, so Ayu means life and Veda is knowledge or more more detail, it's sacred knowledge. So literally, quite literally, it means the sacred knowledge of life. But when you translate that conservatively, it basically means how can you live? Ayurveda provides the knowledge to us about how to live our life in a way that promotes longevity. Longevity? I don't know why I just forgot how to say the word. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure you have had that experience as well where you have a mental block. You totally forget yeah. exactly 
<laughs> Everybody gets a little Longe- camera shy. <laughs> Longevity. Longevity. So that's the word of the day for you guys today. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Ayurveda basically provides us with the knowledge of, of how to live a long, healthy life. And um, again, it's sim- very similar to yoga. It's about being proactive and not reactive. But when it does come to reaction time, Ayurveda is there to have your back. <laughs> In terms of reaction time? In terms of reaction. So like, yes, What does that mean? Like, you're living your life, if you're living your life in a yogic and Ayurvedic way, you are relying more on plant, plant and um, more natural ways of tackling things. But um, in reaction, I mean, like, if you do have some sort of a problem that arises, you don't resort to some band-aid. Like, in modern medicine, we prescribe pills to reduce the symptoms or, well, not we prescribe, you prescribe, um, <laughs> just like pills to to cover up the symptoms or to basically hide the actual root cause. Whereas Ayurveda can get to the root cause and heal that source. And in conjunction with modern medicine, not to say that modern medicine is awful, I'm just saying that when you supplement modern medicine with Ayurveda, you can produce a harmony of, of cures. So let me, pains. let me sort of rephrase it a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I think, <laughs> I think in the world of Ayur, Ayurveda, other, other than it pro, provides the secret knowledge of how to live long life, mm-hmm. you know, longevity is something that's really important to all of us Mm -hmm. you know we want to live as long as possible as healthy as possible without you know without dying pretty much because (laughs) nobody wants to die (laughs) but i really took it brought it or taught it from the perspective so those people who are ayurvedic practitioners healers doctors whoever you know gurus monks they they learned the ways of Ayurveda. So what does that mean? It means that every plant, Ayu means life, right? Mm -hmm. So every life and word is sacred. So every life is sacred. Mm -hmm. But every sacred life has their own energy. So if each plant has their own energy, and if each human has their own energy, and if one is lacking another, then you can supplement different lack there of energies with energetic plants you can change the energy by changing the plant energy so if you take something that is really wet you can dry it and it becomes dry so the Mm. energy changed so somehow those who developed or somehow it developed as a group through community and time-tested understanding of energies Mm -hmm. the science came about and the understanding was we're gonna assess the energies of the human and assessing the energies of the human means looking at their different pulses whether it's in the arm whether it's in the or it's in the wrist if it's in the arm if it's in the body different places in the body, how a person looks, how they are. You can pick up a lot of things from assessing the energy. So that's a way of, by association, Ayurveda Mm -hmm. got to an understanding of the energy. Mm -hmm. It could be the root cause, but they understood the energy. In order to change the energy, they said, after many years of trial and errors and understanding of those, they said if we use different plants that have different energy, then you can change that person's energy when you apply them, when you take them, when you use them in different fashion. Mm. So the plant energy, which is the life energy, has came in. Ayurveda also looks at energy of animals. So there are things in Ayurveda where they're also using different animal parts or different animal 
pretty pretty much different animal parts mm -hmm. to use them for certain people not for everybody mm -hmm. not because you have to assess the energy and then use this from wherever it is in in the world mm -hmm. to help heal this person or change their energy and changing the energy of something that is that you don't like changing mm -hmm. it changes the disease and it leads to a healing state mm -hmm. now from today's perspective as a doctor i can say that going at the root cause and being an anti-aging doctor mm -hmm. going at the root cause means doing as many testing as we can looking at the genetics looking at functional testing looking at micronutrients mold all these things that we you've heard us talk about our philosophy here looking at the emotional pattern looking at you know subconscious programming to see what is really going on in mm -hmm. somebody's body that gives us a gives us an understanding of what the root cause is now that's a little bit more than what a conventional practice is and conventional way of practicing medicine is mm -hmm. but then when we look at a little bit more in detail from functional and integrative perspective and now mm -hmm. the anti-aging perspective with genetics and mm -hmm. that world is just going you know bananas and 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 opening this whole epigenetic concept where outside of the body changes the inside of the body mm -hmm. and that's what you know to some degree yoga and ayurveda is right. that can you change the outside of the body to change the inside of the body because pretty much all seven and a half billion people that we have have less than 0.03 percent change in their mm -hmm. genetics so if we're almost identical and it's just a matter of expressing and turning on and off genes, mm -hmm. which can make you look a certain way compared to behave a certain way, uh, or put you at a predispose you at a risk for some disease or others. Mm -hmm. Then all we have to do is turn off that gene or turn on that gene to give you that benefit. So when we look at Ayurveda, there we're looking at these energies, but then. Being a practitioner of Ayurveda requires a lot more understanding of the human body because so then it's I have a not question. we cannot use Ayurveda it, as we are trained to use supplements and medicines. Right. Right. Traditional, like sorry, conventionally, if somebody has pain, we give them pain medicine and that solves their issue. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think about Ayurveda and say hey this herb was really good we're going to use that for this mm -hmm. so that that's not how the practice of ayurveda is so then that is basically what i was about to ask like yeah. for someone that doesn't know ayurveda do like how do you determine what foods like is there such a thing as bad energy or bad vibrations in food and and if there are good, then there is there something that balances it out? And how do you know, like, is some bad stuff necessary or should it all be positive? And how do you, how do you cater it for your patients and how do common people, how should they approach it? All right. So there are a couple of questions you asked me. Yeah, that, there were a couple So first of all, people have, to, like, you, you have to understand and patients have to understand as well that what is their energy? Right. When you go look at when you go talk to a, an, an Ayurvedic practitioner, they're going to look at your pulse. They're going to look at your body and they're going to tell you you are either Vata, Pitta, Kapha or you're of some sort of energy that you have. You know, we tend to put people into categories. So either you are a summer category, which is very hot and or you are a winter category, which is very fluid and wintry type with water or your spring or fall category where you fall into a lot of movements. You know, during spring or during fall, a lot of movements are happening. Mm -hmm. So you can think of that perspective and you can look at yourself and say, okay, what am I, right? Mm -hmm. I don't have Ayurvedic practitioners with me. I don't know who's gonna look at my pulses. You know, there are like 63 pulses in each wrist mm -hmm. that somebody yeah. has to measure we can do that in our office but if you're sitting at home you're wondering okay how do i use this understanding of of different seasons and apply my life or apply my 
uh, apply who I am to those seasonal changes because mm -hmm. you're some type of season as well. So what, a basic understanding that you'll be able to read up on these things is when somebody is really skinny and really tall, they are usually, usually summer, no, they're usually f uh, fall or spring um, type. A type of person. Yeah. They love movement. They love, they think a lot. They're very creative. Somebody who fits into a skinny but not too skinny just a little bit bigger but square face square personality square body type not too fat but not too skinny either then they'll fall into summer type of personality they have a lot of heat energy in themselves and then if you're on the overweight or obese side then we have to look at generally speaking you would be in Oh, you would, you could have been very skinny and then you went into becoming obese or overweight. Well, your internal energies want you to be very skinny, but your external energies, because of what has happened, has changed you into very stagnant water energy type. And that's okay. Some people are born that way, mm -hmm. where they are just a little bit wide, a little bit more stockier than others. Mm -hmm. And they just have that energy and they need to learn how to flow with that energy. Mm -hmm. Because that doesn't mean that they're obese and no matter sometimes what they do, they're not going to be able to change their shoulders and make them into as tall and skinny, right? You're just not that. Right. You might be a short uh, in height and that might give you that kind of energy. So these are, we can put different genes into these different categories based off of those. Now that you know, right, based off of those, you're going to be able to know what type of meditation what type of yoga what type of diet and nutrition what type of herbs you can and you may take depending on what your issues are now that sounds like a pretty big task to complete but mm -hmm. i would say the first and foremost thing is to just read about what ayurveda and what tapeta and kapha is and what type of body type you will fall into mm -hmm. or come down here and we'll look at your pulses and we'll tell you what type of person you are or that you're supposed to be right because mm -hmm. life has changed you into something so is one like vata pitta kapha or like summer spring are is one better than the other or no is it just different? everybody everybody has all three of them okay all, everybody has all three of those characteristics sometimes i'm very Vata, sometimes I'm very Pitta, sometimes I'm very Kapha, or I can say I'm very summer, spring, and fall. We all change. Okay. With seasons, we also change. Mm. So we have to understand that just a little bit more about who we are. Mm. So when we look at somebody's pulses from the left hand, mm -hmm. it tells us about what they are inherently. Okay. When we look at somebody's right hand, that allows us to know what they have become you are what you are right now but your internal self might want you to be somewhere else mm -hmm. the goal of life is to balance both of these pulses on both wrists oh. so that way you know that whatever you are supposed to be that's what you are you're doing everything to match that and mm -hmm. your body is matching it and that is now in harmony your past and your future are in now harmony mm -hmm. left and the right are in harmony you know moon and the sun are in harmony so different meridian channels in your body will be in harmony mm -hmm. and that's when somebody's in harmony in their body they automatically feel mm -hmm. great they feel amazing now the issue with ayurveda is that it has been associated with a lot of herbs and we are treating herbs as medicines because technically speaking, they are medicines, but the, the usage of medicines traditionally in conventional practices have been associated to symptoms. Symptoms give medicine. Mm -hmm. In Ayurveda, there's, that's not how it is. It's not symptoms in Ayurveda and then you give an herb. It's the energy in Ayurveda and you give an herb that changes the energy. And 
that energy can be changed with any of the herbs, right? If I want to change somebody from summer into fall, then whether it's ashwagandha or turmeric or ginger or basil or squash, you can use any of these to change that energy into fall. It doesn't have to be only ginger because it's hot or it doesn't have to be only basil because it's common. It can be done with any plant. So the learning how to do it will be essential. Yeah. Now, somebody can become, somebody can go from summer into fall by doing certain type of yoga postures that you talk about, mm -hmm. following certain type of breathing practices, mm -hmm. following certain types of mudras, yeah. or hand gestures so following certain type of diet and we can change somebody into something you don't have to depend on the herbs or supplements mm -hmm. you can change your energy directly based on time of the day when during the daytime should you be eating right the question that we always ask people is this if the earth is not making the same food year around Mm -hmm. Why are we putting in the same food in our belly the year yeah. around? <laughs> That's it, a very good it question. It absolutely <laughs> makes you know, a, a sense to ask that question. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make sense for us to eat the same food year around when the planet isn't even wanting to produce that food. Yeah. So that's where the concept of seasonal foods come in. When we eat seasonal foods that are grown in our own community or on our own land, that automatically will start resetting your energy because now you're automatically putting in foods that already are matching your energy because you're living in that area now obviously it's insanely difficult to grow foods in desert <laughs> and in the antarctic and in the greenland and sweden and all these places where the temperature stays below certain degrees for many 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 months but and same thing in America, from north to south, it's totally it different. different. So we have to understand how do we use nature in those areas to change our energies. And somebody in Texas who loves eating, for example, soaked almonds. If those same soaked almonds are given to somebody in northern Chicago, it might end up making them fat. Even though people talk about how there's phytic acid and all these things that are in, in the elements that have to be washed away and it's really good for the body to wash those things away. Mm -hmm. But almonds are almonds, they're not wet. When you add water to it, the people who are living in a hot climate love it because it's cool. cooling them down. Yeah. While people in the colder climate need that type of warm heating, yeah. heating you should not add those kind of things so understanding that and that same element once it's washed you can roast it add ton of ghee in it or you know whatever things seasoning. whatever seasoning yeah. in it and you can make it into a hot thing so yeah. so you can do that too so understanding those energies of these different plants and different foods and your own energy because you might be cooking for four people in your house and all four of them are of different body size, different body types, different diseases. They might have different personalities. So how we change that food for them because you're serving food and making food for the same people. All four of you guys are eating same Taco Bell. Well, it might suit one, but it might not suit the other. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it behooves us to really understand who we are, mm -hmm. where we come from, and how, how we can add these energies in mm -hmm. us. Now, now it's, it's understanding these concepts is what mm -hmm. we're going to go into more detail. Yeah. Obviously, you know, we have our practice that is completely wrapped around the anti-aging conventional practice and Ayurvedic practice and yoga and herbs and supplements and energy world and reflexology. So we do all of those things here together. But when we when 
you know, we need to talk more about different herbs. We need to talk about more about different Ayurvedic diets. We need to talk about different mental, emotional understanding of these different characteristics and body types. So we'll go into all of those details. There will be a lot more videos coming after this on these topics. In the community, we have PDFs, we have notes, we have accountability trackers, we have, you know, um, a, lot of a lot of resources. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I would urge you to, if you're, if you're interested in learning about those things, and join the community. The community not only has those things on Ayurveda, but it also has nutrition uh pretty much guided nutrition for yourself it has guided mm -hmm. yoga classes guided meditation classes as well and obviously all the anti-aging stuff that i want to tell you it's so, basically one place where you can go to get everything you don't have to jump around to different sites different places to find what you need it's it's given it, it has it has things that covers many 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 different topics yeah. and it will be a journey that you'll take on your own to figure out, hey, how is this helping me? So with that, you know, the link is down below. Like, subscribe, retweet, tweet, share, Instagram, however you do your thing uh, to help share this knowledge. Every Friday, we're gonna meditate for you. If you let us know what you're struggling with, we'll send our positive vibes, positive prayers out to you, your family, anybody who contacts us, we pray for them, obviously our patients as well. And with that, do you have anything else you want to say to them other than go get Ayurveda? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds uh, very complicated right now, but as it just takes a little bit of initiative and it, it simplifies on its own as it unfolds. So stay tuned as we, as we lay it out and make it as simple and as accessible as possible. That is the most profound thing she has said. And <laughs> she's a genius. It becomes simple as it goes on mm -hmm. right that's what yeah. you said yeah so it will become simple life as it unfolds so with that thank you so much namaste god bless you take care